Hello everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Probably not that many of you have been here before, but I create content for adult content creators to help them run their OnlyFans or whatever alternative fan site like a business. However, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Instagram growth hacks. So like in the terms and conditions, you have to read through those. I prefer to keep my Instagram fairly vanilla, just so I don't have to worry about like, you know, making a new one. I gained a thousand followers in just three days. And then after that, I almost gained another thousand followers. So I'll make sure to put like a picture of that there so you know I'm not lying. That's what I wanted to talk about in this video is reels are on fire. That's how I actually gained this many followers in such a short period of time is I just had like one reel go viral and it had 2 million views. I'll also put a little thingy right here that you can check that out. And my Instagram will be linked down below. So from August 27th to August 30th, I gained a thousand followers. And then the day after that, I had like almost another thousand followers just from this one viral reel that I posted. One of my favorite tricks for this is just like making a TikTok because you can reuse the same content and put less work into it. And I just think that that streamlines your business a little bit better and you can cover more platforms. You know, sometimes I feel guilty as a content creator if I'm not putting out new content constantly, but then you also have to think about like how many people are on one platform and don't use another. And especially on Instagram, like I haven't seen that much growth on TikTok. I've had a few videos reach like 100,000 views, but on Instagram, I've had like a few different videos get over a hundred thousand views and you know i have one video that's almost to a million views and then i have the other video that's at two million views right now so i've just noticed like the algorithm it's like pushing reels more and even though i love tiktok and i think that the formatting is easier i actually really haven't gone into instagram reels and like made an actual <laughs> instagram reel because i just always reuse my tiktoks but i use this app it's called snaptick.app i'll put that in the description down below if you don't know about this i know a lot of people like in the social media industry know about this but i was talking to my friend who's an author and like he's trying to build a platform on social media and he didn't know about this app because he was telling me you know I said I just make TikToks and then I put them on Instagram and he was like yeah but having the watermark is gonna make your content go down in the algorithm and I was like yeah you're right but there's this website if you want to use it so he didn't know about it you might not know about it there you go I'll link it down below you know one of my favorite Instagram growth youtubers is Vanessa Lau you should go check her out if you want more in-depth videos about like how to grow your Instagram, these are just some little tips and tricks that I like to use and I'm trying to share with my audience. But if you need something more in-depth than this, I definitely recommend you checking out Vanessa Lau. And she just posted a video about how she gained a thousand followers or 10,000 followers in a week, I think it was. And it was because she was posting two or three reels every day which is a ton of content and you have to think about like how much effort she puts into that but i know she has another video about like how to film 16 reels at a time or something that woman she's great go check out her content but i know she said that when she was posting two or three reels a day she did see a decline in her engagement because she was putting out more content. So sometimes people would miss her new content, but she would put it on her story because if you put it on your story, then it still counts as a view. And yeah, she said like your engagement will go down, but your following will go up. I do think that that is a little overboard for a lot of content creators, especially if you're only a part-time content creator. So what I do is for reels, I try to post five reels a week. And then for grid posts, I try to post three grid posts per week. And then I'm supposed to post 10 stories per day, but I've never ever posted that many stories. Like as much as I'm a person who is on social media and enjoys social media, I don't document like every single moment of my life. And another way to boost your content in the algorithm is to go live after you post your content. You know, the affirmation that I always tell myself when I'm getting like sick of putting out content is Mac Miller has a line where he says, the more you do, the less you wait. So that's the same as when you're putting out content, you know, the more content you produce, the more people are going to see it. Like that's just how it naturally occurs. You know, the more content you're putting out, 
the more people it's exposed to. And you know, sometimes you have flops, but sometimes you have really big wins and it's just like going through the process. I kind of talked about that in my video about like the process of becoming a millionaire. Like obviously I'm not a millionaire. That's not even what I was talking about in that video. But I was talking about in the book, he talks about taking, you know, like two millimeter steps every day and just like continuing a process and like waiting to see the results. And that's basically all social media is. You know, I just was listening to like a motivational speech video from Matthew McConaughey. And he says, you have to do something and fall in love with the process. Like you can't fall in love with the results. You have to fall in love with the process. And like, that's how you'll find like what you're passionate about. So me, ding, ding, ding. I hate to say this, but if you're watching my YouTube channel, I feel like I can be honest with you. OnlyFans is not like my favorite thing to do. You know, there are some girls that are like horny all the time and they love doing OnlyFans. And I love OnlyFans for like what it affords me, like the freedom that it gives me, the amount of money that it brings me and like I can be my own boss and everything. But I'm not like, ooh, let me like jerk off every fucking day. <laughs> I actually really like making my YouTube videos and like editing them and like putting the sound between it because it's almost like a video like journal for me, like a scrapbook. <laughs> Like a lot of the videos that I make aren't really even for you guys. Like there are videos where I just want to like look back and see all the memories with my friends. Right now I'm editing a video where it's like, go out with me and my friends. And I'm so excited. I love this video so much. It's super cute. Where was I? I was in the middle of something. Oh yeah. You have to fall in love with the process. So like if you don't enjoy making content, then like what's the point of like trying to be a content creator? I understand like you want to have the freedom and you want to be your own boss and all of those things. Obviously like that's what I want too. And that's how I'm in here. I also know like Farnoosh Tarabi said something about how journalists, they have a job that pays and like a passion project. And that's kind of how I feel too. I feel like OnlyFans is like what pays me and like YouTube is kind of like my passion project. And then managing all of my other social medias kind of directly flows into those two buckets, those two main buckets of subscribers that I care about. And like, obviously OnlyFans is the one that pays me. So yes, I do care about it and I love it, but like not in the way that like every single day I'm just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so the more content that you put out, the more followers that you can attract. I feel like that's just basic knowledge, you know? Your engagement, like your likes might be down, but you'll see your followers go up real quick if you are posting more and more and more. These numbers that I gave you, they came from my social media manager. I wanna be very clear and candid and authentic with my viewers. I do have like a social media manager, but I see them more as like an accountability partner. She'll send me trends that I can keep up on. So I'm not scrolling on social media for hours at a time because I see like what's trending and that's really all I need to know. And I come up with the ideas and I make the content myself and they'll send me like analytics for averages of like what time is the best time to post, which you can look at your own analytics. That's probably a better idea, but if you're just getting started, you can also look at these averages. There's plenty of like graphs that you can look at and articles you can look at online if you're trying to research some of those things, like the best time to post, but you can also go into your analytics. I'm going to try and put like a little tutorial. If you go into your insights, and then you go to your audience, then you can go to total followers and most active, and you can go to like the hours and it'll show you which hours your audience is most active on Instagram. And there are times that are best for the Instagram algorithm specifically, but your personal analytics might be different. So make sure you look at both of those and you can kind of like test both of them out. I think that's the thing that I love about social media is that it's like constantly changing and there's so much to learn about it, like in the algorithm and like what works and what doesn't. I think it's really fun. I think it's just like a new medium of creativity and some people don't like that, but like, I think it's really fun and cool to be like at the very beginning of something that I think is going to change media forever. Another thing that my social media manager helps me with is hashtags. So trending hashtags, you can go to your explore page and you can kind of see what pops up. One of my favorite tricks to use is when you post a story, either like if you're posting a new post, put hashtags behind the photo or like at the bottom. And I like to use the color picker and like kind of make it the same color so that you can't see it as much. 
I don't know. Maybe I'll put a tutorial of that if you're interested. And when you're posting to your grid, another tip that I like to use is making carousels. So if people swipe on your carousels, that counts as like engagement. And another thing that I love to do when I create carousels is that's where I'll tag brands and also a lot of like meme pages, like hot girls, like to try and get more engagement. But I don't really like it on my first picture. So a lot of times if I post a carousel, you'll see all my tags on the second photo. One way that my social media manager helped me to find which accounts to tag is just using keywords kind of like model or like baddie, like whatever kind of account you have. So mine is obviously like thirst traps. So if I just type in keywords like that, accounts will pop up for me, like popular accounts. And I'll try to pick ones that are relevant to what I'm posting. And I just wanna be really like clear, you know, I do have a social media manager. I kinda wanna share some of those little tips and tricks, but like I said, I also look into what's trending and I come up with all of my content on my own. So I just wanna be clear and candid about that. But I want you guys to like know that it's okay if you don't wanna spend that extra time researching trends, scrolling through your phone. Like if you have better things to do, you can hire somebody that will help you with those things. And there are so many people that are willing to do that right now. Even like one of your friends or something, they could do it as a side hustle where they're really into social media, but they don't want to create content. So they're just like looking at what's trending and they can help you out. So those are some of my favorite ways that I've been able to gain followers since I've really been putting a focus on my Instagram, you know, there was a long time that I didn't really care. Like it was fun to post on Instagram, but I didn't fully curate my feed and I wasn't posting all the time. You know, I might post once every two months or something, but now I'm really taking it seriously. So to review the five things that I think that you need to be doing on Instagram in order to grow, you need to post reels. You should be going live after you post reels. A little side tip that works on TikTok too. You need to post stories, use trending hashtags, know when to post. And then I also need you to comment down below if you learned something new during this video, like what did you think was the best tip? Let me know down below. And if you liked this video, please make sure you hit the red subscribe button down below so that you're notified every time I upload new content. And I will see you in the next one. Yeah.